Until I was diagnosed with cancer almost three years ago, I commuted for a number of years between Charleston and Zeebo, China, where I lived with my family. During that time, I met not one single politician, so I cannot comment at all on the state of U.S.-Chinese relationships with any expertise. But I did get to meet and make friends with many wonderful people. During my travels, I made a point of visiting numerous universities and made contact with artists and art faculty members throughout China. I developed the following lecture, which not only introduced my art, uh, but also introduced to Chinese students who are absolutely starving to learn about Western art, something about the influences uh, that I drew inspiration from. The purpose of the lecture was to inform students of the value of not trying to imitate, but to draw knowledge and inspiration from the art of the past. Robert Peterson, who curated this exhibition, thought it might be a perfect way to introduce this audience to my work as well. You will notice the Chinese captions. This one says, this is one of my earliest computer works made almost 20 years ago. Zeebo is a city of 9 million people, actually a small city by Chinese standards and not even on some maps. I was one of perhaps a few dozen Westerners living there, and yet every street and every store had signs captioned in both English and Chinese. The captions were very useful in China, where accents vary greatly and translators are rarely familiar with art terms. The captions are here for my Chinese friends, my way of saying thanks. At the time I made this piece, I was faced with the technical limitations that the computer could only make very simple black and white marks. This portrait of Berthe Morisot by Manet has always been one of my favorites and served as an inspiration to me for my earliest days as a painter. I've always been amazed by how he was able to use simplified value and form and to produce a portrait with such a commanding presence. Because I am both an art historian and an artist, I'm very interested in historical technique. Many of my works have resulted from the exercise of trying to see how traditional methodologies might be adapted to the new digital medium of the computer. Some works, like this self-portrait, may look like they were made with traditional media, but it is not how they look but what I can learn from the artist's approach that is important to me. My primary interest in this work was to create a convincing illusion of form on the computer by using a traditional approach to the control of light and shadow. When I was making this self-portrait, I was reminded of this 1509 self-portrait by the German painter Albrecht Dürer. I wanted to achieve something of its confrontational presence without actually imitating his Renaissance style. Because my principal area of art historical interest is 17th century Dutch art, the method and example of Rembrandt is never very far from my mind. For example, Rembrandt and Rembrandt school paintings like this one have taught me lessons about how to manipulate the illusion of light, especially around the figure, to achieve a greater sense of volume even in a work whose abstract quality seems far from Rembrandt's technique. The knowledge gained and the computer techniques developed 
can be applied in a very different way to create a work which on the surface appears to have nothing to do with Rembrandt's method at all. Sometimes I use works I admire, such as this painting by the French 19th century painter Henri Toulouse-Lautrec, as the inspiration for creative experiments. I experimented with moving a camera during long exposures to a try to achieve in a purely experimental way the exaggerated contrast between foreground and background space I found in Lautrec's painting. It led to this work, which breaks most traditional rules for handling space and looks and operates nothing like the work that inspired it. One of the most important lessons to learn from the past is that in art, a rule once understood can always be intentionally broken to achieve a new effect. In addition to studying Dutch art, I also studied Chinese art, and this early work was inspired by Chinese painting and the Japanese prints they in turn inspired. The strong theme of the female observed by the other, which develops in Chinese painting early in the Tang Dynasty, has become a theme I return to time and time again. The rhythm, apparent simplicity, and yet subtle complexity of the Tang and later dynasty painting has served as a constant challenge to me as a Western artist. It is in large part why I traveled to China. Western works like this sensational work by Edgar Degas, which in turn was directly influenced by Japanese prints, has been a strong influence for me in all aspects of drawing and composition. In my early computer works, I eagerly tried to absorb the lessons of both East and West. This work by Degas, for example, has dominated how I think about compositional space in painting. There is so much to learn here. I keep returning to its example time and time again. For example, I marvel at how Degas used color to control our understanding of how space operates in the painting. I did not consciously start out with Degas' work in mind, but at some point while making this work, I recalled Degas' example and tried to make color reinforce the sense of space in the same way, moving from the warm magentas in the foreground to what I imagined at the time was a cool Degas blue-green in the background. Obviously, I was completely wrong, but the punishment for failure is often a surprisingly good education. I don't pretend to be anywhere near as accomplished as Degas, but with each attempt comes an improved understanding. Each work, each lesson, perhaps provides a little more progress.
I think it's equally important for an artist to try and absorb the lessons of both the past and the present. I have also been heavily influenced by any number of contemporary artists in much the same way. In this work by Richard Estes, I was particularly drawn to the use of window reflections to introduce ambiguity into the shallow foreground space. In this work, my attempts to control deliberately ambiguous foreground spaces led in time to another work which turns the effect inside out. This image of an Emmanuel DeWitt painting in the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts was something of a breakthrough work for me. I wanted the foreground to remain a cool, abstract, flattened, and somewhat ambiguous space, and to have the illusionistic space of the painting become warmer and more inviting drawing the viewer past the flattened foreground into the spatial world of the painting on the wall. It was a breakthrough, not because I think the work is so outstanding, but in making it, I learned I am not as bad an artist as I feared I might be when I first started painting. I stopped being ashamed or disappointed in my work after this piece. Studying works in the past, I have learned that it is not just the color and compositional complexity that makes a work like this wonderful painting by Henry Toulouse-Lautrec so successful. It is the fact that the complexity of the painting style, its color and composition, is perfectly matched by the emotional complexity of the scene. I strive to strike the same chords in my work, balancing the color composition and style to the emotional content, and perhaps adding a postmodern note of stylistic ambiguity of my own.